I'm Jerry Kafitz, and I'm going to talk to you today in the fourth in a five-part series on the topic, How Does a Good Church Become a Cult? How is a cult different from a church? Well, you might think that's a really obvious and simple question. Well, in some cases it is. In many cases, it isn't. A cult is an imposter church. A cult is structured along the same lines as a church in terms of the outward appearance, in terms of how it presents itself, in some ways in terms of how it functions. But there is one primary difference, one important difference, in terms of how a cult responds to the world versus how a good, solid, well-balanced Christian church responds to the world. And I'm going to talk to you about that in this video. Once you see this identifier, once you see a church adopt this tactic in its response to criticism, you know that there's a high likelihood that you're dealing with a cult here and not a healthy church. And here it is. A church responds to critics by labeling. Labeling. They don't deal with the substance of the argument they try to discredit the person making that argument in a personal way. This is called an ad hominem attack from the Latin after the man, an attack on the man, an attack on the credibility of the man, the character of the man, the person of the man, and not the substance of the charge that's been presented. And it works something like this. Uh, somebody comes to uh, the church and says, well, you know, so-and-so said you guys are a cult. Well, here's how they'll respond. They'll say, who told you that? Well, so-and-so told me that. Well, you know, that guy has a reputation for being one of the worst liars in this town. Did you know that that guy, and here it comes, a list of everything that person has done. Why? Because they can't deal with the substance of the argument, and so they want to dismiss the argument. They want to marginalize the individual. They want to compromise and neutralize the individual rather than deal with the substance of the argument. That is a sure sign of, of a church that is not a healthy, balanced church. In a healthy, balanced church, there is a process. process. There is a method. There is an orthodoxy. There is a protocol for dealing with criticism. And that is something that I'm not going to address here, but it should be out in the open, and it should be done openly and honestly and fairly and with respect. If it turns out that the person bringing the charge has an ill motive, that'll come out. That'll come out. But for, for the instinctive response of a criticized group to make an ad hominem attack, that's a dead giveaway. That's a dead giveaway right there something's wrong. Something's very, very wrong. The adulterous husband, when he's confronted, will have one of two responses based on whether he's guilty or innocent. If he's guilty, he'll malign his accuser. He'll try to diminish and defeat and destroy the platform from which that accusation is made. If he's innocent, he'll do this. He'll want the light turned up as bright as it'll go and he'll want all the evidence pro brought out and put out in the open for everybody to see and he'll want a complete and thorough examination of the facts that's how an innocent person reacts has there been criticism in an organization a church that you know of how have they responded the way that they've responded will tell you if this is the response of a healthy good Christian church or if it's the response of the cult. I'm Jerry Kafins.